Hello everyone. First at five, an arrest in the four alarm fire that torched a Southwest Portland apartment building. Investigators say this is a case of arson and the suspect lived in the building. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter and I'm David Molko. That suspect Garrett Rep made his first court appearance this afternoon. Mike Benner was in that courtroom and joins us back at the scene of the alleged arson. Mike, what have neighbors there been saying about the suspect? Yeah, David, they're telling me that Garrett Rep was nothing but trouble. Basically, he just harassed people in this building, and that might explain why building management tried to evict him back in March. Turns out, though, he stuck around and allegedly started a fire that put a lot of lives in danger. In a Multnomah County courtroom Friday, we got our first look at Garrett Rep. Through a public defender, the 30-year-old pleaded not guilty to starting the four-alarm fire that torched the May apartments. An eye roll, to be honest. Gabriella Precious Keelhorn lived in the apartment building and lost everything in the blaze. She tells us she's not at all surprised that a days-long investigation involving both drones and detectives led right to her downstairs neighbor, Rep. Keelhorn says for months he's been terrorizing her and really everyone in the building by pulling the fire alarm regularly. In fact, KGW discovered through public records the fire alarm was pulled 16 times since February, the most recent just two days before the fire. I don't like to punch down. I could tell we were dealing with severe mental illness. And perhaps that explains Rep's arrest in late April at the Empress Condos near the corner of Northwest 16th and Burnside. Court documents obtained by KGW indicate that Rep barricaded himself inside the apartment of an ex-girlfriend he was stalking. Oh, he's very troubled. I, I, I'm not a psychologist, but I would use the term sociopath. <laughs> um, he's really big, big time trouble. Wesley Mahan is the superintendent of the Empress Condos, and he can recount several bizarre run-ins with Rep. At the time, I had no idea he was capable of arson. But investigators believe Rep is capable of arson and did in fact start the fire that all but destroyed the May apartments. That's why Rep was arrested, jailed, and in court Friday. Gabriella Precious Keelhorn hopes Rep doesn't see the outside of a jail cell for a long, long time. He is a literal domestic terrorist. I mean, this was an act of terrorism. A right in court today, the judge did order that Garrett Rep be held behind bars without bail. In other words, he is not going anywhere at least until after his next court appearance Wednesday of next week. Back to you. Such a big development there, Mike. Thanks so much. In McMinnville, police have opened a criminal investigation into what sparked a fire at a downtown pizza place. Third Street Pizza, which includes a pizzeria and movie theater, sustained significant damage Wednesday morning, though firefighters were able to keep the flames from spreading to neighboring businesses. Police say they have identified what they call two people of interest from surveillance video. Both were interviewed, authorities say, but for now there haven't been any charges or arrests. Both police and fire are investigating. In Eastern Oregon, the search is over for a Vancouver man who disappeared during a camping trip. The Baker County Sheriff's Office has confirmed it has found the body of 40-year-old Lon Hung Nguyen. He vanished a week ago on a trip with friends to Farewell Bend State Park. That's along the Snake River near the Idaho border. Authorities say Wynn's body was found in the water just downstream from the park. More gun violence this Friday when a 17 year old was shot this afternoon in southeast Portland. Police say when they responded to a Winco store at 79th and Powell, they found the teenage girl outside with a gunshot wound. She was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. Police say they believe the shooting took place a few blocks away on Southeast 75th and Holgate. No information yet about a shooter. And police say a 16 year old was hurt in a shooting in North Portland. We first brought you this story yesterday as breaking news here on KGW News at 5 o'clock. The shooting was at North Interstate and Jessup. Police say the teen is seriously injured, but he should survive. Police are still looking for the shooter or shooters. Anyone with information should contact Portland Police. Today, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said the projected debt ceiling deadline has been extended now as negotiations continue in Washington, D.C. The new date is June 5th, a little bit later than expected. Yellen also warned today in a letter to Congress that inaction on raising the debt ceiling would, quote, cause severe hardship. 
A default on the debt could mean consequences such as job losses, as well as missed paychecks for military members and Social Security recipients. Federal agencies like the Transportation Department are bracing for the worst. That worst case scenario is terrible for every part of the American economy and every part of American life. Travel is no exception. House Republicans and the Biden administration have been trying to break the log jam. The issue is GOP demands for steep spending cuts. Late today, President Biden said a deal seemed, quote, very close. We're getting our first look this evening at what a new interstate bridge could potentially look like. The team calls these visualizations with the disclaimer that these are not Final designs. We're going to zoom in. There are six models to look at. One that's going to remind you a little bit of the Glen Jackson Bridge on I-205. And then two cable bridges, one with the cables encased in concrete housing on the bottom then. Then there is a lift span option that will only be considered if height requirements cannot be worked out with the Coast Guard. And finally, this guy, a double-decker design with light rail, cyclists, and walkers below the roadway. So what do you think? Program Administrator Greg Johnson says he wants your opinion. So I am I'm not going to put a thumb on the scale and say Greg Johnson likes this one or that one, but but we do want to hear back from people on what they think. And to that end, there are public meetings coming up in both Portland and Vancouver. You can check out the designs online too. much more info and links at KGW.com. By the way, coming up at six on the story, an update on Oregon's portion of the funding, which right now is being held up with so much else by the walkouts. The warm weather might have you heading for the water this weekend. American Medical Response wants to make sure you do it safely. This morning, AMR's River Rescue Team was out at Glen Auto Park in Troutdale training in the Sandy River. The team of about 20 practiced techniques to help distress swimmers. And they have some tips for people heading to the river this summer on how to stay safe. Enjoy the river, be safe, always swim with a buddy, Please come by and get a life vest. Life vests are really, really important. The water is really cold and the water is moving fast. So swim safe and enjoy your weekend. Starting Saturday, AMR will staff Glen Auto Park and High Rocks Park in Gladstone every day through Labor Day weekend. Good reminder about that life jacket. Matriarch of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde, Catherine Harrison, has died. Harrison passed away last Sunday. She was known in particular for her efforts to restore Native American tribal status, working for years to overturn the Termination Act of 1954, which took away federal recognition from 61 tribes in Oregon. It all paid off in the fall of 83 when Harrison got a call from Oregon Representative Les O'Coin. Here is how she described that moment when we interviewed her in 2012 for an Oregon History Maker Spotlight. Catherine, I'm called to tell you your bill passed. The fight, you know, the 11 years to get the restoration and recognition back, you know, it's just everybody seemed like they walked taller, straighter, more proud because we were, again, part of the family of Indian nations nationwide. So proud. Harrison did not stop there. She worked with O'Coin and Senator Mark Hatfield on the Reservation Restoration Act of 1988. She also helped establish the Spirit Mountain Casino in 95 and the Spirit Mountain Community Fund, which has donated millions of dollars to nonprofits across the region. There will be a public memorial for her at the casino. That's a week from this Sunday at 10 in the morning. Catherine Harrison was 99 years old.